Lawrence Stern burst onto the London literary scene in early 1760. He had lived in relative obscurity so far, as a Yorkshire clergyman. He was embracing his newfound role as a successful fiction writer. His first novel, The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy Gentleman, the first two volumes of which were published in the last days of 1759, struck its first readers as eccentric, striking, rare, tedious, singular and ingenious, to quote just a few initial reactions. Stern overturned what we might now consider to be the conventional features of a novel, producing a non-linear and digressive narrative. With Tristram, Stern had created an idiosyncratic narrator whose opinions make up his life story as and when they occur to him, and they mostly concern the older generation of the Shandy family. In Tristram Shandy, Stern makes countless references to learned texts, some real, some invented, and weaves baldry into his comic account of his family and his own upbringing. The novel also uses a striking and provocative array of typographical and visual devices to capture the reader's attention and to create or to evade alternative meanings that interact with or run against the text itself. These include his famous black and marbled pages and his lines illustrating the digressive plots of each volume. The success of the first two volumes of Tristram Shandy was so great that it quickly ran into a second edition with an engraved illustration by the famous artist William Hogarth, and Stern was inspired to publish yet more works. Firstly, two volumes of his own sermons, cheekily published under the pseudonym Mr Yorick, the name of the fictional parson who features in Tristram Shandy. Stern also went on to produce further volumes of Tristram Shandy, with a final ninth volume appearing in 1767. Stern continued the witty, satirical, provocative strain of his first volumes in the work's subsequent instalments, but also introduced new themes and elements too. He developed the touching, pathetic qualities associated with the highly popular Uncle Toby, for instance, and in sentimentalised scenes such as the narrator's encounter with poor Mad Maria as he travels through France. Stern thereby moulded his text to suit a wide range of audience tastes and tried to keep his readers interested although sales of the later volumes dwindled and did not match the success of the first instalments. Nevertheless, Tristram Shandy caused a wave of enthusiasm and criticism alike, while Stern himself was celebrated as the latest literary sensation. He befriended the rich and famous, including actor David Garrick. His portrait was painted by Joshua Reynolds, who depicted him in a clerical garb but with a curling smile indicating his sense of humour, while a copy of his famous book rests on the table. In the final year of his life, Stern produced A Sentimental Journey Through France and Italy. This was 1768, in which the fictional Yorick is now the narrator, pursuing his own version of popular continental travel, as he journeys for the heart, that is, to find the touching encounters and experience of human nature that belongs to the true man of sensibility. The text slips between touching pathos and suggestive innuendo, the reader never being entirely sure which path to tread, but perhaps ultimately accepting that a truly embodied man or woman of sentiment can be a person of feeling in all senses, carnal and spiritual. From the outset, Stern's publications provoked an immense and diverse array of adaptations, spin-offs and continuations, material we now refer to as Sterniana. Stern's characters and key scenes appeared in countless new places, while many readers parodied his narrative style and graphic quirks. There were pamphlets, poems, plays, songs and full-length novels based on Tristram Shandy and A Sentimental Journey, while both texts also stimulated a huge range of visual material. These adaptations show popular trends, the appearance of well-loved characters, such as Toby and Maria, for instance, and how new writers were inspired by Stern's quirky narrative techniques to produce idiosyncratic takes on the novel or on travel writing of their own. Stern and Sterniana is a Cambridge Digital Library project funded by the UK Arts and Humanities Research Council. It showcases Stern's own publications and a selection of some of the most important and interesting examples of Sterniana from 1760 to 1840, as found in Cambridge's library holdings. All of these texts are rare and sometimes unique. Side by side with Stern's own works and with each other, they collectively show what attracted readers' attention in their source texts and sometimes in their fellow adaptations. 
through high-resolution photography of texts which have been transcribed and introduced by experts, the Stern and Sterniana dataset helps to reveal something of the exciting sensation that Stern's works created in their day and of the lively creative world of the late 18th century in which they emerged.